After many failed attempts to make our first game, then one or two awful looking projects, me and my bro finished Midnight Fire in 2016. It was a tiny top down shooter. A few weeks later, we created Color Shooter. You got to use red bullets against red enemies, blue against blue, kind of a mind twister. We used the Unity game engine, coded in C Sharp, and had Autodesk Maya for 3D modeling. This was just the beginning of our six year long journey learning how to make video games. So in this video, we'll have an ultra fast look at all 80 games, how this was possible, and talk about some of the important lessons learned along the way. Raining Apocalypse. I made this solo, was usually just the artist and designer, but here I was learning C Sharp. Then there's Surviving Hell, another top-down shooter about a cute angel that was accidentally sent to hell. The Vicious Cycle, first local multiplayer game, kind of plays like rock, paper, scissors with squishy moving shapes. The Horizontal Kingdom, first 2D game, I absolutely loved drawing in Photoshop using my first Wacom drawing tablet. The Enemies Within, back to 3D with an FPS, about blasting to pieces fears and doubts in a human mind. Towards better, a slightly cringy 2D platformer, first attempt at pixel art. Bring Your Imagination to Life had a pretty cool concept where you infuse life into inanimate drawings. Beneath the skin, did you playing as a spooky nerd that can quite literally see beneath the skin of his friends. Be Yourself was my first attempt at a game jam. Game jams are game making competitions where devs need to make an entire game in two or three days around a given theme. Here you rotate a chunky head and try and get the balls in the holes. My first big game was The Fire of Belief, another adventure inside the mind where you conquer fears, doubts, and anger. It had a massive bestiary and was heavily inspired by the works of Edmund McMillan and his game The Binding of Isaac. I made seven tiny games in seven weeks because it's a ton of fun and a chill way to test risky ideas. Favorite one is Blend In, where you try and act like the AI. He Almost Killed Me is a brutal platformer with a strange meta story about game development. Evolution was made for another game jam. You slowly destroy planet Earth. Spooky stuff. So we've already had a look at a couple games, but of course these get better and better throughout the video, so make sure to stick around. So I was able to start creating games as a teenager without any programming knowledge, thanks to the Unity game engine, which is the tool I use, and we're actually sponsoring this video, so thanks a ton, Unity. I didn't need to spend years studying how to code my own game engine, but instead I could get down to what I liked doing most, which was testing new game ideas and actually building worlds. I was of course constantly inspired by the other amazing games that were made using Unity, and which showed me what was possible with the tool, and that really kept me hungry and wanting to constantly improve. In the link, you control two characters at once with slow motion enemies. Then I made perhaps one of my best games ever, ha ha. A try not to laugh sort of game. <laughs> 2018 and 2019, I took part in a ton of game jams because it was a great way to make games alongside a community and get lots of feedback. It was also the first time teaming up with Jonas Tyroller and learning to collaborate with other developers. We made Life is Snot and Edgar's Blobs. Then I made The Other Side for Halloween, which had a cool mechanic where you could reveal a second spooky side to the world. This directly led to my first commercial video game, The Dreadful Whispers, which I sold in Steam. It's a puzzle platformer full of weird mechanics and an even stranger story. Many, many nights and days were spent building this. Was also regularly posting devlogs on this YouTube channel, talking about the progress made on the game, which was my number one marketing tool. Made close to $8,000 after two weeks, which was very motivating and a clear sign that making money as an indie developer isn't an unrealistic dream, but something real and totally within most people's reach with enough time and effort. Soon after that, I began working on Dashing Fire, which is the second game I ended up selling. It was a small action-packed planet-hopping roguelike. The levels were randomly generated and there was a dozen unique bosses. Dave Allen made some stunning music again, great project to work on, although I took a three month break from it midway through development and came dangerously close to giving up on it entirely. While making Dashing Fire, I spent some weekends making other small games, a favorite being a chaotic nursery simulator made with Jonas and Yan. Then we have Squabbles, which is a strategic turn-based army battler. The Twisted Factory, a puzzle card game where you must destroy your own deck. Necrobomb, which has a cool silhouette art style. You kill your own character to cause a giant explosion, which destroys the terrain and allows your little ghost to make progress. Now, in case you also want to learn how to make games, you can check out some of our game dev courses. We have one that teaches you how to make a platformer adventure, an online multiplayer game, a turn-based strategy game, or even a top-down shooter. We're actually giving away the top-down shooter course for free to the first 1,000 people that asked for it. The link to that giveaway is in the description of this video. Okay, next we have...
created with Liam. This is the third project we sold on Steam. Made in three months, this is a local multiplayer deathmatch. A weird football style game with a sprinkling of magic and weird wobbly creatures. Going Down in Fishtory is a short underwater adventure made with Jonas, Yan, and Liam. The White Bird was a challenging art project made with a more detailed art style. Got stone golems, secrets, and even fat dragons. All right, then we reached the end of 2021, and I wanted to make one game and one tiny YouTube video every single day for seven days. My favorites being The Splotch, a small horror game where you literally tear off the player's head to use as a weapon, and Starhop, where you both build the level and control a little golden astronaut. I highly recommend making tiny games in short periods of time to get out of creative blocks. Often creative blocks are caused because you're trying very hard to think of the perfect idea, so making quick experiments removes a lot of that pressure. Got into board game design with Jonas, making Town Shift, a strategy game where you score points by placing little houses in specific patterns. That was extremely fun to make, but looked quite rustique, so I later tried using a printing website called Board Game Maker to make Dark Snow, a simple battler between two undead armies. Let us know in the comments if you're interested in seeing more board game design videos with a couple other projects in the making that we would love to share. Black Dice was a spooky silhouette style card game. Then Jonas and I turned ourselves into a mini boss fight. This was an experiment where we tried mixing videos and games. Then we made a game using barcode scanners instead of classic controllers. The entire office became a spaceship which we could run around, scanning barcodes to move the ship, shoot enemies and refuel. Liam and I then made Dwarves and Cathedrals, a strategy game where the goal is to build one of these incredible monuments while hordes of demons try to tear it down. Tribal Mutations is a multiplayer auto-battler where you evolve tiny armies that then battle each other. Finally, we have the Map Makers, where each player controls an explorer that draws a map and then must use their hand-drawn sketch to find specific items in the randomly generated world. Each of these projects was a chance for us to explore a new topic and indulge our curiosity about worlds that have nothing to do with game development. Architecture, natural selection, cartography. And now we finally reach the last part of 2022, which was spent working on past the game challenges. These are games made with other developers. The catch being that no communication between them is allowed. So for example, I would start the project, working four hours on it, then pass it on to Liam without saying a word, and he would have four hours to take whatever I made, add stuff and improve it, and then pass the game to another developer. We've made five games this way, and every time the end result was surprisingly good, considering the chaotic way they were developed. Here they are in order. Piece by Piece, which is a spaceship building survival game. Then there's Mana God, where you defend a castle from armies of blood red goblins. Titan Smasher is a first person boss battle where you grind minions for blood and use that to cast powerful spells. There's also a strategy game where you manage a nest of creepy spiders. And finally, there's Martian Mayhem, which is an online multiplayer top-down shooter. Best thing about these projects was getting to meet dozens of new developers and making a successful YouTube video series. Each project seems instantly more enjoyable and interesting when there's more than a single creative mind involved. As you can see, most of these 80 games are either tiny, experimental, or even complete failures. But, of course, we learn from each. Some of the 80 games I've made over the past six years were even worse than Haha. -ha. Some I decided not to put into the video to keep a good pacing. Some quick honorable mentions I created would be Good Vibes, which is a Christmas game that triggers the idea for Dashing Fire's movement system, Spherical Delight, which is a 3D reflex game, Little Humans, which is a strategy game about sacrificing squishy people on a blood-soaked altar, and if you think that's weird, then check out The Howler. <laughs> Ah yeah, and then there's Tsunami, which is a sort of tower defense strategy game. You can play all these games using the link in the description, and if you're not sure which to try, then here's my personal top 10 favorites. We're going to make 2023 our best year yet with many great videos, collaborations, and games, so stay tuned, subscribe, like the video if you did, and see you real soon. Cheers.